Hey guys, April Melvin here. And have you ever assumed something about somebody? Just thought you knew exactly what someone was thinking and it got you in trouble? Well, then this is the video for you. Today we're talking about spiritual battles that involve people and we're looking specifically at assumptions. All right, guys, before we get into the meat of the video, I want to take just a quick sec and ask that you please consider subscribing to my channel. This channel is all faith based. So I'm going to be sharing just different things I'm learning in my current Christian walk, things I'm studying in the Bible. If that sounds like it interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. I put out new content each week and give this video a like and a share. I would really appreciate that. So we have been looking at spiritual battles, and today specifically, we're going to be talking about spiritual battles involving people and our assumptions. And I really think that this assumption piece is like the sister of the expectation video that I did last week, so you guys should check that out. Um, but really and truly, a lot of the spiritual battles that we face involving people and remember, our key verse in Ephesians 6 tells us that all of our spiritual battles, that everything that we face spiritual battle-wise does not involve people. We think that it does. We act like it does. But truly, our battles are against the enemy. Our enemy is Satan. And so um, in looking at our spiritual battles, I really think that our failed expectations or our assumptions about those expectations or assumptions in general, guys, they are powerful tools for the enemy. And so today I want to walk through what those are. I want to talk about um, how those spiritual battles impact us and then ways that we can be victorious in them. All right, so let's talk about assumptions. And man, do assumptions get us in trouble. We are constantly think that we know or can guess or can figure out what someone is thinking or why they're doing what they're doing. And we spend so much of our time in this realm of assumptions. We get ourselves in trouble. And you couple that with what I talked about last week, which is a failed or missed expectation. And man, things start to spiral so hard. So last week I used the example of missing somebody's birthday, forgetting to wish a good friend a happy birthday, and how when that happens, that's a missed expectation. We expect that our friend will wish us a happy birthday. So when that doesn't happen, we get upset. Add to that the assumption piece and we really start to spiral fast, right? We start thinking, well, they didn't wish me happy birthday because they really don't like me or they're mad at me or, you know, I did something and now they're um, not talking to me or so on and so forth. We just get into this place where we're assuming and that assumption leads us down a very dark path very fast. Guys, I can talk about this with great expertise because I am the queen of this. I think that I can tell what other people are thinking and why they're doing it. And I have to tell you, I spend so much time or have spent so much time freaking out and worrying and trying to figure everybody out. It's a mess. And so guys, one of the things that God's really brought me through this year is to stop thinking that you can know everything, right? Stop assuming that you know what people are thinking or why they're doing what they're doing. The Bible tells us we don't even know our own hearts. Think about that for a second. We don't even know what we're truly thinking at times. So how can we possibly know what other people are? Guys, my encouragement in this is if you are in a situation and you are finding yourself trying to figure out what someone's motive or um, what somebody's goal is in that situation or what somebody's really thinking, you're starting the assumption path. You are going to go nowhere fast on this path. I would take a second and really examine because you are in a spiritual battle and you need to understand how to get out of it. All right, so how is the enemy using this as a spiritual battle? Well, guys, remember, our enemy's sole goal, his whole purpose in life is to kill, steal, and destroy. It's to distract. It's to discourage. It's to divide. Any way he can do that, he's going to do that. And any time when you're facing a spiritual battle with people, he can get you into the place where you start 
focusing on um, what's going wrong and, and what's upset and, and spiral, right, and create that that circle, he's going to do that because it divides us. Guys, when, when we start assuming that we know what someone's thinking or we we understand, you know, what's going on behind the scenes that causes us to react to that person differently. It can cause us to lash out, you know, irrationally or in a sinful manner. And guys, before you know it, it's just gotten out of control. So this is a clever tactic by the enemy. He uses it all of the time because we, we fail to realize our shortcomings in this. We cannot know what other people are truly thinking. We spend a lot of time, we spend a lot of effort trying to discern that. But the truth is we're never truly going to know. And when you spend your time assuming it does not go well, right? You end up in a far worse place there's way more division and destruction, and that's the enemy's sole goal. So how do we win this battle? Well, I've got great news. It's not a hard battle to win. It starts first by recognizing what you're doing, right? That you are in this place where you're trying to figure it out and you're assuming things about people when you truly don't know. And so the number one thing I can encourage you guys is to communicate, seriously. I, I don't know why we don't do this like we should. Um, the enemy cannot operate in truth, right? That's what the word tells us. He is a liar. He is the father of lies. And anytime we operate in a situation where we, we're in darkness, where we're hiding what we're feeling, when we're hiding what we're thinking, the enemy gets to reign there. So how do you solve that? You communicate openly and honestly with people. You tell them what your expectations are. You tell them how you're feeling. You tell them what you're thinking. We need to do that in a loving and kind way. We need to do that with grace and with mercy, but we need to communicate. We need to shine that light because guys, when we do that, it completely takes away the power that the enemy has in that situation. If we're being open and honest with one another, he cannot use his lie to manipulate us and create the division that he wants. So please, my first encouragement is communicate. The second though is if you've done that, if you've tried to communicate that, right? Stop worrying about what other people are thinking. Um, guys, I think we would really truly stop worrying about what other people are thinking about us if we realized how little they're thinking of us. Honestly, we are the center of our own universe and I know that we think that we're the center of everyone's universe, but truly we probably don't come across people's thoughts nearly as much as we think they, that we do. And guys, you can't impact it anyway by worrying about it. So just stop. Maybe they don't like you. Maybe they do like you. Who cares? If you are trying to do your best and be loving and be open, then they're going to think about you what they're going to think about you. So stop worrying about it. This next one, game changer. And I do struggle with this, so fair warning. But here's my third very helpful tip. Um, you can love people that don't love you. I know it's mind boggling. <laughs> it's sort of that love your enemies thing that the Bible tells us about, but truly you can. We need to stop waiting for people to love us first and just love people. You can absolutely like people, love people, be nice to people, enjoy being around them with them hating your guts. I know it's crazy to think about. And again, I'm not great at this, but truly we need to step into this kind of love. It doesn't matter what someone thinks about you. Your responsibility isn't what they think about you. Your responsibility is how you respond to them. So if you are responding in a consistent, loving, Jesus-like manner, that's it. That's your responsibility. You can't change them. You cannot truly know what they think. So again, your responsibility is in your response. Respond with the love of Christ and love them first. And guys, bring up that shield of faith. 
so much of this stuff is rooted in this idea of fear of rejection. And so if we bring that shield of faith, when the enemy is throwing those darts at us, trying to get us to second guess how people feel, and we bring that shield of faith to say how God thinks about us, that he loves us, that he knit us in the womb, right? That we're his beloved, that he's our refuge and our rock. If we start diving in to what God feels about us, then we'll stop caring so much about what the world thinks about us. The world is fleeting. The world is changing. Instead, turn to the eternal, unchanging God to get your value and worth. Stop looking at the world for that, guys. That shield of faith in this instance is so important because it redirects our thoughts into what everyone else here might be thinking to what truly God actually believes about who you are. Think about this. He values you so much. He knows the number of hairs on your head. That's a kind of love and a kind of value that you won't find in this world anyway, right? So stop looking for it. So guys, remember, communicate openly, honestly. Stop worrying about what people are thinking about you. Love people first. Do it. That's my challenge to you. And guys, bring that shield of faith up and start reading what God thinks about you. That's how you win this fight. That's how you fight the spiritual battle. All right, guys. So that's the video on spiritual battles involving people and our assumptions. I hope that was helpful. I have to tell you guys, I have been going through this a lot this year. I have grown a little, but I'm sure I still have a lot to grow. Um, this has been something that I have really struggled with a lot. And so if you've struggled with it too, please let me know in the comment section. I would love to hear about it. And guys, if you want to hang out with me more, feel free to check out my Facebook group, Mighty Mamas. I'll put the link in the description below. Guys, it's a group where we do morning devotions. We share inspirational quotes and memes and, and just different things that lift us up throughout the week. So if that sounds like it interests you, feel free to join that group. And guys, next week, I hope we're going to wrap up spiritual battles. But this one is going to be spiritual battles involving people that are they're just being jerks, right? We, I do think that most of our spiritual battles involving people revolve around our own personal expectations and assumptions, but there are times when people are just mean. And so I do want to look at that and how a Christian can set up healthy boundaries in those instances. So if that sounds like it's helpful to you, please come back next week.